In our lives, we have certain things that define us, you know? And for me as a photographer, it's obviously an image. You know, I started my life just fishing every day and that passion turned into photography because I wanted to share it with everyone. And it started out doing marlin, you know, jumping and all that sort of thing. And then it moved across and became underwater. And taking that plunge, took me into a whole new world. Like it's been amazing getting in. You know, at the start it was just fish that were hooked and then as it's evolved, it's jumping in with free swimming marlin and sharks and tuna and everything. But it's when it started to evolve that, or mature I suppose is what you think, to the point where I wanted to change to show people what I see. Because when I started fishing, and I talked about this in my podcasts, about how you tell people about these beautiful fish you see and these beautiful experiences, but especially with a marlin or something, you bring it back, it's dead. It's dull, it's grey, there's nothing to it. And for me, it was changing that and finding those and showing people what we see on the water. And that's why I became a photographer. But it was always, and I've always had a passion for it, is getting in and seeing what's going on underneath, being a part of it. And I teamed up with Aquatech in the early days and jumped in and first started taking the plunge, so to speak, and started seeing all these fish, you know, marlin and sharks and tuna. And over the years, I've got some good picks. But what is it? What is that one defining photo? Well, I've had some amazing experiences when you think about it because I've had massive feeding frenzies where you got dolphins and sharks and seals and marlin all together going, smashing through, going crazy. I'll tell you what, actually on that note, is that when people talk about it and go, oh yeah, if you see dolphins, you're safe. There's no sharks. That is crap. Those two work together. They often feed together and they team up together and give bait balls a hard time. Trust me, if you see dolphins, there's quite often sharks around. Now, I'm not talking white sharks, because they eat, they like eating mammals and stuff, but other sharks, whalers and all that, and they still bite. I've had really cool experiences with jumping in and saving a hammerhead that was, they were gonna eat it. I said, no, let it go. And I swam off with this cool little creature and then, of course, I jumped in with a thresher shark and got a ride on its tail. Like getting towed along by a massive fish. How good is this? Like it's just, I've had the best career on earth, seriously. But not all sharks are nice. Do you know what? I've had some mean ones as well. I had a whaler shark over in Western Australia. Man, this little puppy gave me a really hard time. I jumped in, he came racing up, did the old drop the fins in, charged in. Had a crack at me, turned around, came back and just went, bang, smashed into me. Oh, never bit me, just gave me a really hard time. Good as all those experiences are, they're not the defining moment. That defining moment for me was the infamous Mako attacking the Marlin. And at the time, I never realised that it was a once in a lifetime that no one had ever done it or seen it. But going back through it now, and because now I've got, you know, an editing thing, I'm learning how to do it. And that's why I'm doing all this, because I'm trying to practice, is going back over it and showing all that footage, all the stuff that's never been seen. It is so cool what happened. And I appreciate it more now, years later, than when it actually happened. So we were fishing off Port Stephens. Now, Port Stephens is a couple of, oh, a couple of hours north of Sydney. It's sort of locked up a lot with Marine Park, sadly, these days, so you can't appreciate it the way we used to. But there's a spot called the car park. Now it's about 24 miles offshore. It's featureless, but the bait stacks up and the marlin stack up. And as they say, the car park, all the boats stack up. So we're out there fishing. And the funny thing is that what we were doing is I had the water police on board, I had fisheries on board, and I had a professional deckhand. We're filming a documentary on how to release marlin. This is the ironic part to it. So we're out, we've started fishing, you know, we've caught one, caught a couple of fish, let them go, everything's going to plan. And we finally hook up the next fish, Phil Bolton's on the rod, we're fighting it, and it's playing up a bit, you know, we're chasing it round and it's being a real menace. And we didn't realise why, because obviously there's this massive shark there, chasing it, but you've got no idea. So we've, and the problem is that in an area like that, we've got a lot of boats condensed. If the fish runs away, another boat might run over the line. So you've got to be on it. So we're chasing this fish around 
and I'm getting the gear ready because I'm going to jump in. So the plan is we get the fish up to the boat. The guys are going to show you how to release it because marlin get tired a lot. So you want to hold them and look after them. And you get a lot of criticism going, oh, why didn't you just let it go? You can't just let it go. You want to revive. It's like us. You run around the block three times, you bug it. This is the first day ever I've actually put a little camera on. Now, they didn't even have those GoPros and stuff in those days. I think it was called a VO or a... I can't remember what it was called, but a little camera on the side, and it only shot 720. It didn't even shoot 1080 HD. And then I put my first ever camera on the boat, which was a little lipstick camera that went to a monitor to film. So this was the idea behind this. It wasn't, let's face it, I wasn't super technical. I just put it on and hope for the best. And we've got him there, turned him around because he's come up, he was, he's playing funny buggers the whole way. Get him up beside the boat, I'm in the water. Phil's there, he's put a tag in it for fisheries. We're taking some ID photos so we can try and identify these fish as well. Because it's a really important part of fishing is the research side, is that we play that vital role in looking after it. You can't lock it up and pretend that you're fixing it. You have to understand these fish. And fishermen, like it or not, play a vital role in that. So we've got the fish up, it's all good. You know, we've got it beside the boat. I'm in the water, a bit of current, so I'm dropping back, I'm having to swim up hard. And it's hard enough to swim against the current anyway, because the boat moves the wind and all that. But on top of that, you know the real problem? Is that I've got this bloody great camera in front of me. So I'm like, it's like carrying a piece of two by four, I'm pushing into it, like trying to get up to it, get up beside the boat, do some still shots, get some nice shots, dive down. And the funny thing is, as I was next to the fish, the fish is slunk up against the hull of the boat. They never do this. They never ever do it. They always sit out a bit. This one's sitting up against the hull and it was playing up when they first grabbed it, but when I swam up to it, it's all just cruising along. So it's just weird behavior. As I've dropped back to get the shot, my idea is, and this is the creativity, this is the idea of, you know, the ultimate shot for me, is I come in, they let the marlin go, the marlin swims down, as he's swimming away, I do this awesome panning shot, just coming in straight over the top like that. Beautiful. I didn't go to plan. Did not work at all. So I've come in, I've dropped back a little bit, and as I've dropped back, I've gone, right, Bill? oh, what was that? And you could feel the water move up my side. I'm like, whoa, turn around. Okay? And then right in front of you, like right here, is this massive blue thing attached to my marlin. And your mind it takes a minute to comprehend what what the hell is going on? And I've looked at it, and then I've looked at the guys, and by now my mind's going, that's a bloody big shark. That is a huge shark. But at the same time, everyone in the boat's still out. They're still holding the marlin by the bill, totally oblivious. And there's a massive shark. And we're talking six, maybe 700 pounds. Like, that's a lot bigger than me. That's three, four times. Three times. Three times, let's admit, three times bigger than me. You know, this is a massive fish attached to the marlin. And they're holding it, and he's bit midship, and then he's worked his way down, and when he hit the tail, boom! Snapped the tail off, the poor old marlin's gone burko. They've realised something's going on in the boat, going, holy moly, what the hell is happening here? I think the guys originally thought it was propped. Then they've turned around and gone, oh my God, there's a massive shark. And then it's like, I'll get out of the water. Oh, thanks, guys. You know, I'm stuck in the water. You okay? And for me, because I've set up a little action cam, like GoPros weren't even around there on the side. Well, I think they were, but I didn't have one. It wasn't rich enough to have one. Had a little camera on the side, which I'd mounted on the side. So while I'm doing stills with my Aquatech, I've got this little camera mounted on the side to film it. Now, this was an afterthought because I never really thought about filming. It was only because we're doing the docker. I thought, oh, I'll get a bit extra footage. And at the same time, I'd put the other one up on the boat 
mounted. And as I'd got over the side, I'd gone, I'll just flick that so it's facing over where the Marlins, the action shot, you know, get it. It never dawned on me what I was going to get. So I'm in the water, it's, it, there's massive sharks in front of me. Of course, it takes that minute to comprehend. I'm looking at the fish and looking at them, they're not reacting. Okay? And when he's hit the tail, all hell's broken loose. Like, bang! Marlin's gone off the guard, and I think it's propped. It's like, oh my god, this is it. I'm the water. So I'm just sitting there with the camera running, and everyone asks, what did you think? Why didn't you get back in the boat? You can't get back in the boat. You've got this amazing experience. You have to film it. You can't not. And I know a lot of guys go, oh, I'd panic and get in the boat. No, you wouldn't. As a photographer, you just do it because this is the moment. This is this defining moment. And I'm just sitting there going, Brrr, just shooting every shot I can. I'll shoot it, you know, 5D Mark III, I think, then or Mark, yeah, Mark III. Just go bang, 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 shooting the stills, just getting it. And at the same time, trying to make myself as big as possible to the shark, who is totally unfazed by my presence. And I'm shooting the pics and just going mad, going bang, 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 shooting it all to get it. And it was that one shot, there's a whole bunch of them, but there's that one shot with this massive shark leaning over and just going crunch and grabbing that marlin midship is no one else has ever shot it in the world. And it created a media storm. It was on the front page of the Daily Telegraph. It went around the world. It was fake. It was photoshopped. That's not a real shark. It was absolutely insane. And the funny thing is when it all happened, it didn't even dawn on me that it was that exciting. I just thought it was a shark attack. It's like, oh yeah, it's just another shark attack. It's a bloody big shark, but it's just a shark attack. But what it did was it elevated us from, because as a, as a fisherman, you don't get rated as a photographer because you're just fishing. It's the same with the TV, everything we do on TV. If we do a fishing show, it's down there. But once you do nature or documentary style, you go right up. So this photo changed it to suddenly, all of a sudden you were taken seriously. And for me, it was one of those experiences that was out of this world. And it's weird because I feel sorry for the marlin because we're trying to do the right thing and look after it. And at the very same time, nature hijacked it, took it. And we had, it was funny because you have all these responses like some ridiculous ones which show how dumb some people are. And I quote, why did you tow that marlin out of the safe estuary system into the ocean where there are sharks? Are you for real? And then you get the ones going, oh, why don't you do it? Why don't I wish the shark had eaten you? All these moronic, stupid idiots that obviously never spend any time in the water. This is an amazing part of nature that you were involved with and got to witness firsthand. Everyone loves it if you go and see a, um, a cheetah attacking a gazelle in, in Africa. And yes, it was, the Mako took advantage of a situation and it's happening more and more now with sharks. They're now realizing that a hook fish is a lot easier than catching a wild one. Because because that's what their role is in nature, is that they take the wounded, the you know, the less mobile, whatever it is. They're part of the cleaning system. They're a vital part of it. So what he did was purely natural to him. And for the marlin, it's unlucky. But do you know what? Looking back, that photo now is apparently one of the most stolen photos on Instagram. You check my file, you put it up, it comes up everywhere. It's amazing. But for me, that was the image, that was the shot that really defined my passion and love for the outdoors and it elevated us from just a humble fisherman to a proper photographer. <laughs> look at this! Have a fucking look at that! <sighs> Just came screaming up underneath us. Look at it!